on Prime Crime. Tell me exactly what happened. I just walked in and she's laying on the bathroom floor and there's blood everywhere. A young woman is murdered in cold blood, putting a nation on high alert. Everything seems normal and fine, but that's the last person she was seen with. I really love her. I just have been not convinced that I want to be like life partners with her. And prompting an international search for a fugitive on the run. It was almost the equivalent of taking a brick and throwing it through a stained glass window. Why in the world would you want to destroy someone this beautiful? Hey there, everybody. I'm Jesse Weber, and welcome to Prime Crime, where we break down the most compelling and memorable true crime cases from across the country. Our next story takes us down south to Austin, Texas, in May of 2022. The callous killing of a young athlete sends shockwaves throughout the community, and the pursuit of justice takes a very unpredictable journey across borders in this tale of jealousy and murder. Austin 911. I, I need EMS. Tell me exactly what happened. My friend is staying with me, and I just walked in, and she's laying on the bathroom floor, and I don't know what happened. I can't tell what happened. May 11th, 2022. Caitlin Cash has just arrived back at her apartment to find her friend, 25-year-old Anna Moriah Wilson, lying on the floor of her bathroom. Is she awake? She's not awake. There's blood all over her face Caitlin. and all on the back of her head. Is she breathing? No. She's not okay. breathing. I'm going to tell you how to do chest compressions. Count out loud so I can count with you. One, two, three, four, five, six. Good. Seven. When Caitlin Cash came back to her house, I don't think she had any reason to believe um, that anything was wrong. This is a relatively compact home and so it's pretty easy to have line of sight from where the front door is to sort of the laundry area eight nine ten keep going kid there's a lot of help coming as fast as they can keep going there might be a police officer coming in soon that's okay don't leave her alone and don't stop okay that's good keep going don't leave her alone they'll come to you just keep going I can't even begin to imagine the horror that she experienced at that moment in time because this is a surreal event. She was a real hero in this because she tried to save her friend's life. Unfortunately, it didn't work. By the time first responders arrive on scene, they're too late. Austin, please! Uh, do I stop? I don't know what happened. I just walked in on her. It almost looked like she had been the victim of a beating. There was clearly blood in and around her head. There's a shell casing right here next to my right knee. There's another one right here. We have three shell casings. Go for medication. At least. I pause just a second, Mike. Yeah, yeah, I had so. Nobody heard any shots. We don't know how long she's been down. No. Pretty early on, they determined that this was something other than, say, for instance, a natural event. Mo had sustained essentially three gunshot wounds. Mo has got a wound that passes through her hand. This gives us an indication that she's throwing it up almost in a defensive posture. And this round actually winds up striking her in the head. There's another gunshot wound to the head. But even more interesting is the fact that she has got what's referred to as a through and through gunshot wound center mass to the chest would actually pass us through the heart and create a divot in the floor. Law enforcement immediately pick up the fact that it doesn't look like any type of burglary or robbery. Nothing's disheveled around the house, drawers opening, really doesn't appear like anything's missing. And that execution style killing immediately takes me to this was personal. Police at the scene need to get a better idea of what they might be dealing with. So they speak with Caitlin Cash. No. She doesn't live here. What's her name? Her name is Mariah. Mariah is her middle name. Her first name is Anna. She's she says she's from San Francisco? Well, she's from Vermont, but she's living in San Francisco. And she came to visit you? Yeah. Okay. yeah I mean, she's here for a bike race this weekend. 
Anna Mariah Wilson, or Mo Wilson for short, is originally from New England, really, and she had grown up a lot of her life skiing. And from that, she got into cycling and all kinds of other sports. She was an extremely athletic young lady, and she sort of was taking the cycling world by storm. She is someone you could classify as a top-tier athlete. She's into mountain bike racing, and that's a completely different level. Anybody that had come to know Mo pretty much had nothing but glowing things to say about her. It was almost the equivalent of taking a brick and throwing it through a stained glass window. Why in the world would you want to destroy someone that's beautiful? Do you know if she's talking to anyone or any friends? I know you say you don't live here. I knew she was with my friend Colin. Colin, what's yeah. Colin's Colin Strickland. Colin Strickland. I left to go have dinner with my friends, and then I came back, and this is my house. This is your house. This is my house. She's staying with me. Okay. Did you see a gun or anything like that no, in there when you were there? No, when law enforcement gets on scene, on any type of crime scene, the biggest thing we're looking at is crime scene preservation. Detectives are going to start looking for shell casings, looking for a murder weapon, canvassing inside out. Officers search the immediate area, and they find something out of place, a puzzle piece. They're not sure where it fits. That's her bike. Cover? Yeah. So where the bike go? Where would she keep her bike? I mean, it would be right inside the door. Is there a bike? Give me one. You see a bike? She said she would put it right by the door. No bike. As they are looking around the crime scene, a short distance away in like a heavy kudzu kind of wooded area, they find Mo Wilson's bicycle. Hey, come here. Somebody might be in here. This might be the bike, okay? Over there. At 432, I located the bike. They knew that maybe, just maybe, there was some value in this because who would take what is a pretty expensive bicycle and merely just toss it over? into the weeds, as it were. And that's not the only thing detectives find. Cameras on nearby homes capture what could be key evidence that only adds to the mystery of the case. One of the things that they do look for are patterns. Are there people loitering outside in and around the time of the crime? Are there vehicles making multiple trips in and around the scene of the crime? And what they ultimately did see was an SUV circling the neighborhood. There's a dark colored SUV with a bike rack on the back. Unfortunately, they can't get a license plate from the vehicle because the bike rack's in the way, but it's right close to the crime scene. And throughout that day, it drives by there several times. And as investigators canvass the neighborhood further, they make another chilling discovery. More and more evidence is being discovered. They realize there's a gentleman close by that has a ring doorbell. The footage may be one of the most chilling ring doorbell footages I've ever watched in my life. You actually hear some type of altercation followed by three gunshots. It's incredibly sad. You hear pops, which we know now was the gun being fired, as well as a scream. One of the interesting things about this case, which you don't always get, is an exact time of death and an exact time when the crime occurred. So now we have the ring doorbell footage. You got a timestamp right there on it and a suspect vehicle, or at least a vehicle that we need to look at a little bit further. So Colin Strickland, that's probably someone that they may want to talk to next. Coming up next, with the clock ticking, investigators need to get to the bottom of things, and that means talking to Colin Strickland. This is so far beyond the realm of reality that I live in, or I thought. I think it pretty much goes without saying that Colin Strickland was a person of interest. Whether it's an intimate nature or not, still, you've got this interaction. So he's going to be at the top of the list. Anytime two parties have obviously had some type of relationship and you were the last person to see 
Mo Wilson, you better have a dang good alibi. Wednesday, May 11th, 2022, Austin, Texas. Police are investigating the cold-blooded killing of 25-year-old up-and-coming cyclist Anna Mariah Wilson, a.k.a. Mo, who was visiting from out of town to attend an annual racing event in nearby Heiko. Mo was staying with her friend Caitlin Cash and had just arrived back at the apartment. That's when police believe she was possibly ambushed and shot several times, left for dead on the bathroom floor. When was the last time you saw her? You had I eyes on her. For dinner at 5:30. So you left for dinner at 5:30. What time did you come back? Uh, right, two I, minutes before I called 911. With Mo being from out of town, she has few connections in Austin, which at first leaves police at a loss for possible leads. That is until Caitlin Cash gives police a name, a man Mo has been growing closer to in recent months. Did her and Collins have an argument at all, do you know? I don't have, I don't have any idea. The, you know, the you know only who? thing I know is she said I'm meeting him to go swimming. Okay. All right, and what time was that? Five. Five p.m. today? Yeah. Colin Strickland himself was actually well-known um, in the cycling world, and he was pretty highly decorated. Much of the public believes that homicides are stranger-on-stranger stranger crimes. They're not. Generally, it's going to be somebody that's in the victim's orbit. Not knowing the nature of the relationship that Colin Strickland had with Mo, he's going to be number one on their list. They're going to have to check him off. Police tracked down 35-year-old Colin Strickland the next morning to see if he could potentially be involved. Colin? Yes. Person. yes. Do you know Anna? Um, Mo? Anna Mo. Yeah, uh, everybody calls her Mo. Last name is Wilson. Ryder, she's a, a oh, yes. gravel rider. Yes, yes I do. The two of them had met because Colin was also a professional cyclist. And Mr. Strickland is actually very complimentary of Ms. Wilson in everything he has to say. He talks about how talented she is, how much of a future she has in this cycling world. Her professional world, as you can imagine, is a very small world. It's not surprising that Mo would have struck up a friendship perhaps a relationship with Colin. There's really no easy way to say this, sir. So apparently last night she, she passed away. How did yeah. mm -hmm. she, it, right now it's, a, it's an open investigation, but it is being investigated as a, as a homicide. Colin Strickland's in his garage area, and they deliver that news. And immediately, it is a look of shock. A blank stare, and like the life has been taken out of Colin Strickland. Strickland offers up what he says was his last interaction with Mo the previous night, shortly before she was killed. We went to uh, Deep Eddie yesterday the afternoon, and then the burger. And I dropped her at her, um, her that day, she and Mr. Strickland had met up to go to sort of a, a community pool, and they hung out there, then they went and got dinner. There's actually surveillance footage of them eating. Everything seems normal and fine, but that's the last person she was seen with. Colin goes to drop Mo off. She goes to the door. She knows the pin code on the door handle to be able to get in goes inside, and that's where things take a turn for the worse. It's believed that he dropped her off at home. About one to two minutes from when she was dropped off, an intruder came in and took her life. There's other evidence to suggest that she was being followed. There was actually CCTV footage, and it demonstrates Colin driving away on his motorcycle. The rest of that particular interview hasn't been publicly released, but according to case documents, police noticed several cars in Strickland's driveway, including one that looks very familiar. 
when police go to talk to Mr. Strickland, they kind of take an inventory of vehicles that are there. That's incredibly normal. You take the plates, you run the plates. They found BMW, Mercedes, Jeep. He does say that the 2012 Jeep Cherokee that's there is not his vehicle. They're thinking in their minds, okay, we've got this kind of nondescript, dark colored SUV that we saw on CCTV. Could this be the same vehicle? Law enforcement asked, well, whose SUV is that? And he says, well, that's my roommate, who's my on and off again girlfriend, Caitlin Armstrong's. Strickland volunteers to speak with investigators more at the police station, where they learn quite a bit about his relationship with then 34-year-old Caitlin Armstrong. Has Caitlin ever gotten so mad in the past that not necessarily thinking that she would do anything? You know, but I mean, has she ever threatened anything or? She's always seemed like such a mild, like, gentle person. Mm -hmm. Which is all I could say. It just it doesn't make sense, but just don't be very disturbing. Colin Strickland, great cyclist, meets Caitlin Armstrong in that tight knit community. They start a relationship, they move in together, and it's kind of this on and off relationship for about three years. They even start a business together where they're restoring trailers, things like that. When they are broken up, Colin Strickland meets Mo Wilson and they really hit it off. Colin and Mo had a casual romantic relationship really for about a month or two, but then that seemingly kind of fizzled out. And part of why that fizzled out is because uh, Mr. Strickland's girlfriend, Caitlin Armstrong, Mo Wilson was dating Colin, who Caitlin claimed to be her current boyfriend, but what he claimed to be is that they were on a break. Knowing Caitlin's vehicle is there, what do you think took place? I know both these people, and I can't imagine. This is so far beyond the realm of reality that I live in, or I saw it. So that's what I'm struggling. I'm asking you what you think. Is she capable I of doing something she, like this? I don't believe she, I wouldn't be living with a person who I think is capable of doing this. So the answer is no, I don't believe it. I really love her. I just have been not convinced that I want to be like life partners with her. We'd be better business partners and friends. So as law enforcement continues their questioning of Colin Strickland, and they ask him, do you own any firearms? He comes right out and says, yeah, I'd purchased two handguns in the past. Austin Police Department came with a search warrant of his home. They did find two nine millimeter handguns. He was very forthcoming. He said, actually, I purchased two just a while back. Really? You did? As a matter of fact, I bought one for my girlfriend, Caitlin Armstrong. And not only that, both he and she had gone to the firing range in order to practice. The police at that point in time knew that they were onto something. Coming up, investigators now need to speak with Caitlin Armstrong. Could she somehow be involved? It sounds like you may have some information, may have witnessed something, so I just wanted to chat with you about some stuff. Um, are you familiar with, with what you have going on with that? No idea. Hey everybody, we'll get you right back to that Armstrong story in just a minute, but before we do, I wanna thank our incredible sponsor here on Prime Crime, Morgan and Morgan, America's largest injury law firm. If you should find yourself in that position where you're hurt and you need legal representation, Morgan and Morgan may be who you want in your corner because they are specialists in this area. And you know why they're so big? Because they win a lot. Verdicts and settlements in the multi-millions. And you know what else? They make the whole process so easy for their clients because from starting your claim to uploading documents to signing contracts to talking to your legal team, it can all be done from your smartphone. Also, this is a firm where there's no upfront fee. You only pay them if you win. So if you're injured, you can easily start a claim at forthepeople.com slash prime crime. They just came to my house and put me in handcuffs for no reason. So there was a warrant. I would really like to talk to you and clear some stuff up um, because Colin did bring your name up. May 2022, law enforcement in Austin, Texas, make a connection between 34-year-old Caitlin Armstrong and an SUV seen on surveillance footage circling the neighborhood where 25-year-old Mo Wilson was killed. 
Caitlin was in an on and off relationship with Colin Strickland, a fellow cyclist Mo had recently gotten to know better. When detectives discover there's an existing active warrant for Armstrong on an unrelated charge, they track her down. Let's do a quick pat down real quick. You're here for a warrant right now, I guess. Um, are you familiar with, with what you have going on with that? No idea. Okay, so I guess it was like a theft of service warrant, something kind of minor. Nothing. Okay. A theft of service warrant basically is saying she received a service and didn't pay for it. And that's what they ultimately brought her in on. She didn't pay for her Botox treatment. What a wild type of warrant that's for. But that gives them probable cause now to go and approach her and arrest her and bring her in on that charge. Can you give me any information on what you're talking about? As far as the warrant or as far as everything else? As far as the warrant. Yeah, so I don't know too much. I guess it's just a theft of service. Usually that's like something like didn't pay for something, something pretty minor. Can you tell me what it was that was the theft of service? I can look. Um, I'm not sure what it is at this point. But because you are here and because you were under arrest for that portion of it, we always have to read Miranda and stuff because I want to talk to you about some other stuff that's unrelated to that. As the police begin to tighten their focus in regards to Mo, police want to get to the heart of the matter. And you can tell that she's progressively getting more and more uncomfortable in this environment. She's trying to understand what exactly is theft of service? But you can tell that the emphasis is not necessarily on that particular charge. The reason I'm here is because your name came up um, during a conversation with Colin. Um, I think there's a lot more information that you have that can kind of explain some of the stuff he's saying. I've never heard of this warrant before. I don't know what you're talking about. And yeah. It doesn't seem like you can give me any information on it so, that you want to repeat. Are they not can hear? I think it's for something else. Um, so with the warrants, um they bring Caitlin Armstrong in on that theft of service warrant. They do explain to her what it is, but it was filed incorrectly. Um, and it was filed with the incorrect birth date. Apparently that warrant, the date of birth was wrong. So it had your name, but it, the date of birth is wrong. So it's to a different person. So that's not, you're not under arrest, okay? Okay. <laughs> I know, it's a little crazy. You're, so they just came to my house and put me in handcuffs for no reason? So there was a warrant that they thought was you. Apparently, the date of birth was off. So this is going to be consensual at this point because you're not under arrest. The door is unlocked. You can leave at any time. Um, so I would love to leave. With the incorrect birth date, it's not a valid warrant. Therefore, she's free to go. Do I need an attorney here? I would really like to talk to you and clear some stuff up um, because Colin did bring your name up and I think there's a lot more information that you have that can kind of clear some stuff up. Does that make sense? It makes sense. I feel like I should have an attorney present. So that's totally your choice. That kind of just clears the air. Hey, listen, you were actually free to go, but before you leave, just real quick, I had a few questions to ask you and they're starting to lay that foundation out to start to ask her more questions about where she was the night of Mo Wilson's murder. Now, Caitlin Armstrong immediately kind of puts her guard up. You would love to just leave. arrested me in front of my house, in front of all of my neighbors, and carried me in here in handcuffs in front of yeah. downtown Austin. It was incredibly I can humiliating. Only imagine. She does ask multiple times, like, can I leave, can I leave, can I leave? She never says once, I would like an attorney. So invoking your right to counsel. She just asks, do I need one? But in my opinion, that's not the same thing. And I'm so sorry, I don't have control over that part, okay? So let me kind of explain some stuff. Did you hear about what's happened over the past 24 hours? Colin walked in the house and said one of the women in the cycling community passed away. Yes, yeah. Um, while Colin was talking to us, your name came up and it sounds like there's a lot of stuff that's going on and it sounds like, you know, Colin's been maybe talking to this girl for a little bit and kind of threw your name in there. I think he might be saying some stuff and I want to get your side of it, okay? Because there's always two parts of it. He's got a very different version of everything that's going on. And so when we only hear one side, it, it only gives us one side to work with. 
her behavior is telling to me that she will sit there and have the details of the theft of service warrant explained to her. And then when it turns to Colin Strickland and Mo Wilson, she wants to leave. It sounds like there are some, some issues between you and this girl. And I think that there's probably a lot more to it that you could help explain. Okay, I'm not, I'm not sure exactly what you mean or what information you'd well, like. Well, it sounds like maybe he went out with this girl the other day. And maybe it sounds like from what he's saying that you were a little upset about it. That is not accurate. Yeah, and that's why I wanted to chat with you because I, it's a guy. <laughs> he's gonna say stuff. And so we wanna make sure that we get both sides of the story and everything and clear it up. She's cagey about it. Uh, at that point, she doesn't want to speak to them. But at the same time, I think she wants to know what they know. And that's why she does hang around for a while. What were you doing yesterday? I would like to leave, I think. That's completely your choice. But understand if you do, then we only have one side of the story to go on. Mm -hmm. What is very interesting is her body language during this interview. Initially, she's very just relaxed, but a little arrogant and cocky as they are talking to her. And as that investigator kind of starts to open up that door and ask about Colin Strickland and issues that she had had with Mo Wilson, that's where you see her become more uncomfortable and she is ready to get out of there as quickly as possible. I just am uncertain as to even what you mean or what he could have said because I didn't have any idea exactly. that he, spoke, and he saw or went out with this girl. I, Has he been like talking to her I would on like the to side? Leave. I okay. don't actually know, and I would like to leave. In one final push for information, the investigator confronts Armstrong about her SUV. Your vehicle was seen next to her house when he's saying this stuff, and then your vehicle is seen. Like, I want to be able to explain, OK, there's a logical explanation for this. Maybe you were upset and you were just in the area or something. Like, I don't know, because I don't have your story. When I can't explain that, and all I see is that your vehicle's over there, that, that kind of makes it look not too good, right? When the part is about the vehicle being seen in the area is brought up, Caitlin Armstrong immediately wants to distance herself and get the heck out of that room. As an investigator, that is what I like to call a clue. Someone that doesn't want to lay out their side of the story. When we're talking to Colin and we're hearing like, yeah, there was some, some jealousy stuff going on, like, that doesn't sound very good. I would like to leave if I'm free to leave. Okay. Okay. Is there any explanation as far as why the vehicle would be over there? I would like to leave if I'm free to leave. Okay. Police really don't have any other choice but to release her. They weren't serving a warrant to arrest her for the death of Mariah Wilson. They don't have enough, quite frankly, to arrest her. However, I think what that shows them, though, is this is our probably prime suspect. It becomes clear as the investigation moves forward, Caitlin Armstrong is someone detectives need to keep a close eye on. And now what police are really going to do is working on subpoenaing her cell phone records, any digital evidence, any forensic evidence that they can garner, as well as really honing in on that 2012 Jeep Cherokee that she drives. Caitlin Armstrong uh, decides that it's time to sell the Jeep. So she goes to a car dealership, sells the Jeep. Typically when you see a suspect liquidating things to get you know, over $1,000 in cash, that is a very telltale sign that they're looking to flee. At this point, detectives seem to have an idea of what possibly happened the night Mo Wilson was killed. But as officials are keeping track of Caitlin Armstrong, she somehow falls off the map. She then boards a flight up to New York, flies into there where her sister lives close by and is there at her sister's house a short time. The thing that came into most handy in terms of looking for her was the airport surveillance video of her sort of with her yoga mat going through security at the Austin airport. They knew that she went from Austin to LaGuardia because that was all in her name. When she left, they were able to track her name on that flight. It's there that the case sort of went cold.
That's when local law enforcement decide to call in the big guns. Several federal and international agencies join the search for Caitlin Armstrong. She is off the radar, gone. We have an investigation that's gone from Austin to New York, New Jersey area, and this is where this case takes a wild turn. Hey everybody, we're gonna get you right back to the Armstrong case in just a minute, but before we do, I wanna thank Truthfinder for sponsoring this episode, which makes a lot of sense since so many of the stories we cover on Prime Crime, you gotta ask yourself, how well do we really know the people in our lives? It's a scary thing to think about, but Truthfinder is a service that can maybe help because it is one of the largest public records search services in the United States. You go on their website, truthfinder.com, and you type in a name. And within minutes and a paid subscription purchase, you can access unlimited reports that can include information like phone numbers, location history, criminal and traffic records, including possible arrests, criminal convictions. Also, if you type in an address within the report, it may show you registered sex offenders in that area too. So whether it's researching new dates or friends or reconnecting with people, Truthfinder is a great tool to use. And right now, you can get 50% off of confidential background reports. Just go to truthfinder.com slash LC Prime Crime. The focus of the investigation is becoming tighter and tighter. And right now, Caitlin Armstrong is rising to the top. Authorities are working to track down 34-year-old Caitlin Armstrong, who's disappeared amid the murder investigation into the shooting death of 25-year-old cyclist Anna Mariah Mo Wilson. Investigators have put together several pieces of the case and have determined Armstrong is likely the one responsible, but she's nowhere to be found. That is until authorities make some headway. Law enforcement reaches out to the sister and come to find out sisters passport is missing. So that gives law enforcement the opportunity to say, oh my gosh, we've checked flight logs under Caitlin Armstrong. We need to see if the sister's name has been used. It was in the realm of possibility that she would have fled the country. And so at that point, they put out an international alert about her rather than just simply a domestic alert. They look at flight logs under the sister's name and lo and behold, guess where it is? Costa Rica. But several weeks go by without a trace of Caitlin Armstrong. Federal agents make one last attempt to lure her out of hiding. Law enforcement solicit the help of the United States Marshal Service. That is their bread and butter, tracking down fugitives. And this is a very heavily tourist area, which makes it very difficult for them. But they start looking into hostels. Caitlin Armstrong was an avid yoga instructor and so they thought maybe she's down there teaching yoga. And in one last ditch effort, they decide they're gonna put a Facebook ad out saying that a hostel is looking for a yoga instructor. The very astute hostel stayer actually befriended her and then started realizing that this could be her. She responded to the ad, but the people waiting for her um, was law enforcement. Caitlin Armstrong was captured on June 29th by foreign officials in the Republic of Costa Rica, where she was detained on an immigration violation and deported back to the United States. She was in Costa Rica, living in a hostel, uh, sort of living her best yoga life. She had different names. She even went so far as to get a nose job. Armstrong fled the Austin area days after being interviewed Armstrong was detained by authorities at the Don Johns Hostel located in Santa Teresa Beach following a 43-day fugitive investigation. She dyed her hair brown, she cropped her hair shorter, and had a bandage on her nose where she claimed it was from a surfboard incident. Law enforcement starts diving into the forensic evidence, cell phone data. What we start to see is that Caitlin Armstrong, because of her business relationship with Colin Strickland, she's actually able to go in and read his text messages, see who he's calling, read his emails. It was during that time that Caitlin Armstrong starts to have her suspicions on Strickland's relationship with Mo Wilson. She really began to sort of harass Mo Wilson. Caitlin sent her nasty text messages, phone calls, essentially digitally stalked her. But I think she reached a point where she really wasn't getting any more reaction. 
and she assumed that the two were still involved in a romantic relationship, that's when she decided to do what she was going to do. Caitlin Armstrong is charged with murder, but while she's in custody ahead of trial, there's another crazy twist. So as Caitlin is waiting for her trial date, at some point they have to transport her to a medical facility, a doctor's appointment. And as one last ditch effort, Caitlin tries to flee. And as you can imagine, she didn't make it very far. If it wasn't so tragic as it applies to Moe's death, it might be comical. We know that we have a murderer who's trying to get away with killing this beautiful young woman and not having to pay the ultimate price for it. In November 2023, Caitlin Armstrong's trial begins for the murder of Anna Mariah Wilson. The last thing Mo did on this earth was scream in terror. Those screams are followed by ah, ah, two gunshots. After four or five seconds of silence, Caitlin Armstrong stood over Mo Wilson. And for good measure, the defendant put another bullet right in the heart. Premeditation. I think that that's always the difficult hill for prosecutors to climb. I think she intended to go there to kill her. When you see the vehicle circling even before Ms. Wilson gets home, the gun, all of those things, that does point to intent and premeditation. There were three Shell casings covered at the scene. Caitlin's gun, the result was that those test cases were identified as being the same as fired from that gun. There are four videos of the camera that captured Caitlin Armstrong circling Cash's house for about an hour before the murder. Prosecutors at this point just want to make sure that they have an air sealed case. Law enforcement is pulling the GPS data on the Jeep. Lo and behold, that GPS shows that Caitlin had been driving right near the crime scene on the days of the homicide. The defense, however, had a different argument. Was Caitlin in the black Jeep? Who had access to the black Jeep? Who had access the key fob to the black Jeep. Colin claimed he saw Caitlin Armstrong come out of a black Jeep. How amazing that the one fact that he seemed to remember with greater clarity over time was the single fact that drew attention away from him and pointed the finger at Caitlin Armstrong. All of the circumstantial evidence pointed directly back to Caitlin Armstrong, but CCTV footage from that day when Mo was murdered, there was never actually an image captured of Caitlin Armstrong entering the home. Not one witness saw Caitlin Armstrong allegedly commit this murder. Not one, because there isn't you did not hear about any direct evidence showing Caitlin Armstrong is responsible for this crime because there is a name. The defense argue the evidence is not indicative Caitlin Armstrong is a killer. Perhaps someone else had the motive and opportunity. Rick, come on, Costa Rica. What are you, an idiot? Come on, she ran, she ran. Only a guilty person would run. We do know that Caitlin Armstrong routinely traveled internationally with little notice. Was she scared? Do you think that she may have been concerned a little bit that her boyfriend had killed someone? Or if not that, that whoever killed Mariah Wilson might want to kill Caitlin Armstrong next? People and commentators will talk about how, well, she escaped. So that's a meeting girl, she ran away. But the reality is, is that's actually not a useful tactic at a trial because you can't usually prove someone's guilt just because they ran away. What about those guns? Colin bought those guns. Colin told her to train with the gun. DNA swabs were taken from inside the black jeep. Never tested. 
Why? Why not? Unknown DNA profile on this seat. Unknown DNA profile on these handlebars. Unknown DNA profile on the gun. That does not make sense. Austin Police Department did not want a single piece of evidence in front of you that might point away from Caitlin Armstrong. It was put forward that perhaps Colin Strickland was responsible, that he had just as much reason to want Mo dead. The shell casings obviously matched the guns that we knew had been purchased by Mr. Strickland, but then were in the custody of Ms. Armstrong. In this life, we know a lot of things beyond a reasonable doubt. But that Caitlin Armstrong is a murderer, that she committed this crime, do we know that? Are you certain? However, prosecutors had one more trick up their sleeve, cold, hard DNA. This is where it gets interesting. We go back to that bike that was found. They swab DNA from Mo Wilson's bike that there's a very strong likelihood that the DNA on the seat of the bike included DNA from Caitlin Armstrong. Caitlin's DNA was found on Mariah Wilson's bicycle. So now we basically have that fingerprint in a sense. Mo Wilson is a 25-year-old prodigy taken from Matt and Mr. and Ms. Wilson. The state has met its burden of proof beyond a reasonable doubt. I think we climbed past that mountain and climbed Mount Everest. Overwhelmed. I only ask you to do one thing. Justice for Mo Wilson. After days of testimony from over 40 witnesses, the case is handed off to the jury, and after two hours of deliberations, they return with their verdict. The defendant will please rise. The state of Texas versus Caitlin Armstrong, verdict of the jury. We, the jury, find the defendant, Caitlin Armstrong, guilty of the offense of murder as alleged in the indictment. Obviously, this was a horrific and gruesome homicide. What I really think got her where she messed up, like many of these cases we see, is that digital footprint. A day later, court reconvened for Caitlin Armstrong to learn her sentence. In accordance with the verdict that the jury has rendered, this court hereby sentences you to 90 years in the Texas Department of Criminal Justice and a $10,000 fine as imposed by the jury. Caitlin. I want you to know that I fought for Mo with everything I had that night. I still feel so many things. Guilt for not protecting Mo, for not coming home sooner. I'm angry at you, at the senselessness. I feel deep sadness for the road ahead that Mo's family must continue to walk. Let's face it, the world was robbed of Mo's presence. Certainly according to her friends and colleagues, she was a shining star. I hate what you did to my beautiful daughter. It was very selfish and cowardly. If you allowed yourself to actually know her, you never, ever would have wanted to hurt her. This never would have happened. You ruined your life, your family's lives, our lives. When you shot Mariah in the heart, you shot me in my heart. Mariah is in the presence of God's pure light and love. And nothing, nothing can ever hurt her again. You killed her earthly body, but her spirit is so very much alive and you can never change that. Now, if you thought that was the end of the story, not quite. No, at the time of this recording, a judge has ordered that Caitlin Armstrong must pay Moe's family $15 million in connection with a wrongful death lawsuit, all in an effort to hold her further accountable for this absolutely heinous crime. 
And as the Wilson family tries to find some measure of peace, we're all reminded that this race through life can suddenly be cut short before reaching the finish line. That's all we have for you here on this episode of Prime Crime. Everybody, thank you so much for joining us. I'm Jesse Weber, and as always, stay safe.